NASA's new shock, the moon landing rocket splits open after dramatic buckling failure. It split open under stress, suffering a catastrophic buckling failure, according to NASA officials. And of course, you can see this is what it's supposed to be looking like when it takes off, separating into various pieces uh, as it takes off at the moon. The uh, body, unfortunately, split from the top to the bottom. The NASA rocket will launch the next generation of astronauts to the moon under the Artemis program, but before NASA flies the next man and woman to the uh, moon, the space agency needs to prove the reliability of the transport systems. That's why it's uh, going through all these trials. The safety test on Thursday, December 5th, pushed the SLS to the uh, brink of destruction. It triggered the failure that split the giant metallic rocket wide open. It supposedly went over 260% of the expected flight load before the buckling started, tearing the SLS apart. The SLS was strapped inside of a 215 foot tall harness where hydraulic pistons delivered millions of pounds of pressure into the rocket. And the images of the test site reveal the rocket's outer layers peeled back like a banana skin. Astonishing. Now, even though the catastrophe, uh, the failure of this test was, of course, <laughs> unexpected, NASA was pleased to see that the results of the test uh, will uh, cause the improvement of it. Chief Engineer Neil Ote said, we purposely took this tank to its extreme limits and broke it because pushing systems to the point of failure gives us additional data to help us build rockets intelligently. He said, we will be flying the Space Launch System, the SLS, for decades to come and breaking the propellant tank today will help us safety, safely and efficiently evolve the SLS, the Space Launch System, as our desired missions evolve. The rocket destroyed at NASA Marshall Center during the test that has aced previously safe, previous safety trials. NASA pushed the rocket further as it has before exerting incredible forces on this test. Mike Nichols, who designed the SLS and the tank, said this final tank test marks the largest ever controlled test to failure of a NASA rocket stage pressurized tank. The data will benefit all aerospace companies designing rocket tanks. Now the space launch system, from here what we see, this is a NASA image, block one expanded view. We have the core stage and vehicle avionics, that's the part that peeled back like a banana, that orange thing in the middle. On top of that is a launch vehicle stage adapter. On the top we have the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle, that's where the crew sits. The interim cryogenic propulsion system. Then you have those solid rocket boosters that go off on the side. Main engines underneath. And anyway, that's what peeled up like a banana. And, you know, when I saw this, um, I said to myself, how is it that Elon Musk and his SpaceX, and even this, okay, they're going through, time, through trials, I can understand, they're, they're pushing it on purpose, but we went to the moon already. This was like in the, the end of the 1969, and after that so many times, and the rockets had no problems. Back and forth, things are going back, you know, people were going back and forth. Why is it that all of a sudden we're having these, um, okay, this was a trial, they did this on purpose, but, uh, you know, to make it stronger. But, for example, Elon Musk and SpaceX uh, is having problems too. I don't understand why they don't work together. I mean, NASA supposedly has had success in going so many times to the moon and back. Why don't they give some knowledge and know-how to uh, Elon Musk and his SpaceX company so that they don't waste time and money? They seem to be 
it's just two separate efforts here. They should somehow join forces and uh, share their knowledge. What could I say? Now, uh, the SLS first core stage and the boosters will launch the rocket from Earth, they say, burning roughly 735,000 gallons of liquid fuel in only the first eight minutes. And the rocket second stage will launch NASA's astronauts inside of the Orion capsule, which we said here is on the top, that white thing, on a translunar injection trajectory to the moon. The astronauts will then return to Earth on board their Orion capsules. NASA aims to establish permanent and substantial presence on the moon by 2028. This is by Sebastian Kitley, Express News. Please subscribe and share. Ring the bell so you get my new videos. As I told you before, uh, for some reason I still can't understand, YouTube has demonetized me. And uh, they said that uh, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do. I have to figure it out. But they said I can reapply in one month, January 8th. And I don't even know what the outcome of that will be. In the meantime, I will be uploading many videos a day. And I hope you like them. Please support me. Please, if you can, support my Patreon account. If you'd like for us to keep in touch, please send me your email. My email is in the description box below, as is my Patreon account details as well. Thank you so much and have a wonderful, blessed Christmas season. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.